Thank you. I, uh, I was 20, 21. Uh, let me tell you briefly. I came out when I was underage, and at that time, of course, you had to go to bars. There, we had nothing else. But I looked 12, and I had no fake ID. <laughs> so they, they, literally, they literally threw me down the stairs of Little Moore and all these places. So I eventually said, I'm going to go to the country and you know be natural, and I hate this concrete jungle. And that was all good, you know. Uh, until I realized, you know, where I was in Southern Oregon was the head of the John Birch Society. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there was like plaques that said, well, we burned this Chinese village called Gold, you know, during the gold rush. So then I trotted back here. <laughs> and I tried to organize, you know, Asian women, Asian lesbians. But um, I also wanted to be a writer. And I had, up in Oregon, because we had a lot of time in the hot summer days, I read all the, everything there was to read then in the late 70s. But when I started seeing, back here in San Francisco, Judy Ron and Pat Parker read, I was a groupie. I, you know, I, you know, I, f I saw them do movement in black like six times, you know, every, every time they were in the Bay Area. And uh, I just, it was such an inspiration because Pat was, I mean, you could read, you know, Andazaki Shange or, or Audre Lorde, but you could see Pat live. And she was the first out there visible lesbian of color writer. So she was a huge inspiration. Um, and the other thing was, by and by, I think that was by 78, 79, like Jenny mentioned, um, some of us got together. And we were directly inspired in our uh, piece called uh, I Am Unbinding My Feet and the name of our group was Unbound Feet, w directly inspired by the uh, you know, performance poetry of Movement in Black and Pat Parker. So I'm going to read a quick uh, a piece that what I really loved about Pat that maybe hasn't been mentioned is she had such a great sense of humor. Um, so this is called Today, uh, The What Liberation Front? I just, mm -hmm. I just found this. Today I had a talk with my dog. He called me a racist, chauvinist person, told me he didn't like the way I kept trying to change him. Dogs, he said, do not shit in toilets. Dogs like to shit outside, and he didn't appreciate being told to shit in the gutter. Just because I don't like the smell of his shit, he informed me that the fish weren't so hot about my shit either. <laughs> and property. He wanted to know why people expected dogs to protect their capitalist interest. He never watches television or plays records, and how come I put tags on him? <laughs> My dog, he laughed. He is his own dog. And what's this bullshit about his sex life? If he wants to fuck in the streets, it's his business. Well, And, and the genocide against dogs? Now, by this time, he's growling. And I just said... He didn't have to get nasty. I was willing to study the problem. After all, didn't I buy him good bones and get him groomed once a month? And then he starts hollering about, if he wanted to get dirty and have long hair, that was his right too. <laughs> and another thing he said, if he wants to sit, he'll sit. <laughs> so just shovel my shit about sit, lie, roll over, stand up. And finally, he said, standing up. The next time I patted him on the head and called him a good boy, he was going to lift his leg. Ooh. <laughs> With that, he got up and left the house saying something about a consciousness-raising meeting. <laughs> Thank you. We love you, Pat. <laughs>